March 2020, we were in um, Kortrijk. Yeah. So uh, we had a, you know, we we would get started after preparation of years. We worked two, three years on this uh, on this European uh, project. It's a four years grant. Um, and of course, we, we yeah we were immediately when we started, we had a problem with the pandemic. I, I I won't say too much about how it influenced us, but of course, it was a big influence. But now we are really on track. And we were very happy that the European uh, community decided that we can make the project one year longer because we couldn't do everything what we want. Um, the project exists of three, three main topics. I, I, I will not keep it too long. That is, uh, uh, we have um, curator courses where we uh, work with young curators. Um, they come together at different festivals and uh, with kind of with mentorships with different mentors, uh, we try to uh, create new uh, curators for the festival. As you all know, there's you know, like me, I'm a, mu I'm a musician. A lot of us are of artistic directors, are composers, musicians, but uh, we are not trained as programmers or curators. It's difficult to be trained as that. And we want to create, to, to train new curators coming from different fields, different ages, different ethnicity. Um, that's one thing we have symposia uh, about diversity and the third thing is we have productions um, and that means we have production focusing uh, dealing with the diversity topic uh, when we talk about diversity we had some courses also uh, you can say there are nine diversity topics you could say uh, we have chosen in our uh, sounds now application three as, as the main focus the gender um, at the city and economically economical background so uh, we want to focus on more gender equality we want to focus on uh, more younger people more uh, people with younger younger people coming to the concerts and being involved not only coming to the concert but be on stage and in your own organization and the, the third is to have more um, people with different economic backgrounds of course, we're doing much more, but these are the main three topics we decided to focus on. Um, I think we have, I don't know how many pro productions we have, 20 or 40 in general. Um, and one of them is Freedom to Move. That's one we uh, came up with as November Music. All of the festivals uh, came up with some, uh, some ideas about productions, which we share. Uh, not with all nine, but we share with three, four festivals the productions. Uh, the Freedom to Move is a special one because it's not, it's not a real fixed. Uh, production, like the Philip Venables project you will see tomorrow is also part of Sounds Now, and the Genevieve Murphy project, I think the most of you saw yesterday, is also part of Sounds Now. But this is a more open project, I would say. Um, with two weeks ago, we had the first presentation, and Jody was one of the uh, people who, were, who joined it, so she, could tell, she will tell, I guess, more about how it was for her. Um, and the idea is that uh, uh, the human voice is perhaps the most personal uh, instrument uh, there is. Um, uh, I think the human voice is something which, which really reflects to where you're coming from, what is your background, um, um, because, because it's so personal, I, I think. But Jody sees a singer, she could say more about that. Um, and uh, we made a concept that uh, this project we chose. We have chosen five uh, different singers with totally different backgrounds. Uh, we made a kind of open call, not a complete open call, but we asked people, um, "Do you know somebody?" The idea first was to work, work with people uh, who are, let's say, more uh, in the mid-career or just starting their career. Um, but what was very nice when we made this application, Jody applied. And then we thought, oh, this is also interesting. Well, why only choose uh, young people? Something I forgot to tell. Um, we were going to present this project in five different uh, uh, festivals with different singers, but we thought there should be a connection between the festivals. So we asked one uh, person to be, the, let's say, the artistic director of the, of the whole project. She will travel to all the festivals uh, and, and, and make the connection. Um, that one is Sophia Jernberg. Uh, I think a lot of people know her. She's, um, what is her uh, background? Ethiopian? She's Swedish Ethiopian. Swedish Ethiopian. She lives in Sweden, has an Ethiopian background, trained in uh, contemporary music and improvised music. Um, and she has she's also she chosen, she has chosen the, the five singers. 
um, in Den Bosch, we worked with five singers, so that's Jody. We had an, uh, I don't know the names, it's not so important, but we have somebody with a background from Iran, Afghanistan, <laughs> Turkey, and Spain, uh, and Holland. And Holland, so it's uh, the Afghanistan one. Persian. Yeah, that the was same. the same. Yeah. So we just go Afghanistan, Turkey, uh, Dutch, Spanish, and uh, Jody has um, uh, Indian blood. Is that No. No? I thought so. <laughs> oh. I'm Ashkenazi. I don't know what it is, but... <laughs> As Eastern European Jewish. Okay. But I'm American, okay. but I live here. Yeah, oh, yeah. so she's mixed <laughs> world figure. Um, so we had these five singers. And the idea is also that, that everybody would come, come out of their own comfort zone. And also the idea of Sophia was that it would be one instrumentalist joining this. In, in, the, in this project we had a piano player, a very young one, who was not so experienced in improvising, he's more a jazz player, he was still a student. But we thought it was also nice uh, to, to have also a young, not so experienced piano player. Um, we did the project not in the festival, that was because Sophia uh, couldn't be here, and also because uh, during the festival it's always very uh, hectic. And we thought that this project is much better <coughs> to do it much more relaxed. Um, you will see the result um, in six minutes. Uh, unfortunately, Sophia went, was, uh, was sick after one day. So, and then uh, Jody took over a bit the uh, leading wall, let's say. So we were very happy for that. Um, so the yeah, uh, you will hear the result. Um, so in two weeks, or next yeah, two weeks, there's the second presentation in Huddersfield Contemporary Music Festival, with also with five different singers. Uh, hopefully, Sophia will be there. Um, and then to make the connection, uh, we decided to interview all the different people. Uh, that's doing Beeske. Kuberg, which she's doing the production for the whole thing. She interviewed all the five members. We made a photo of them. And in the end, we will have 25 uh, photos uh, and talks and interviews with 25 totally different singers. And we're still looking for how we, in the end, we will present the, the, the project. We will present it online on our website, uh, but uh, perhaps we also will see if we can have a kind of online ending or even live ending. Um, also, the, the, to be honest, also uh, the idea was to do it this way: is that um, we try to avoid uh, traveling as much as possible. You know, as festivals, we're all inviting these artists. We already invite people to come by train as much as possible, but unfortunately, some people have to fly. Uh, uh, but we really try to avoid that, and uh, so it was also an idea to have the singers local, and in, I think in every country. And there are so many singers with different nationalities living at the moment, which we don't connect to. It's very difficult for us to connect to singers uh, living here with the Turkish background, Suriname background. Uh, uh. We succeeded quite well in, in, in having them together, and it was, I think it was a wonderful collaboration. For me, still, I thought the presentation, you will hear it a bit on the video, uh, everybody stayed a bit too much still in their own comfort zone, I thought. But that's perhaps something we could discuss. Uh, is that good? Is that not good? Um, okay, this was it. We're going to have a six-minute um, film. The idea was that it was not a concert, so we didn't ask them to make a concert, but in the end they made a concert, in a way. Uh, that was also great. It was a one-hour concert uh, on this stage, and we made a six-minute compilation, which you're going to look at now. <laughs>
My name is Rogier. I'm a piano player and asked to host the session. It's a table, long table talk, so the people who are sitting at the table are allowed to talk. But everyone's invited to join the table. Originally, they, the idea was to extend the table to Not forever, but we stay. So if one person wants to add something to the conversation, everybody can join. Um, that's one way of joining in. The second way of joining in is you can write your ideas on the table. So I've, I invite you to start the conversation on your ideas on freedom to move, what it means, what is the ambition and what can we do. Um, but also feel free to write down your thoughts or um, you don't have to agree, uh, but you can uh, create actually a composition here on the table, which we can also check out later with everyone in the room. Mm. So the first question will be, who wants to share 
his or her thoughts on freedom to move? First of all, I was very happy to have been chosen. I didn't think that I would be because I have a lot of experience, and I thought that probably that they would want to have people with less experience. Um, but uh, it was actually very good that I was there because of the fact that Sophia was then ill. Um, not that the other people were didn't have a lot of ideas, but I have more experience sort of like putting it together. We only had really two days, uh, about half, uh, three hours with Sophia, which were super fun, where we just did some improvisations. And then the, uh, the two days, uh, the, the following two days, um, where we worked uh, some, where I led sort of improvisational exercises as a group, and then we started working on solos that uh, um, we had ideas for. The idea that Sophia had was that we worked out of our comfort zone and I had to think about, like, gee, what is out of my comfort zone? <laughs> and then I came up with scat singing, which I don't ever want to do. So I immediately crossed that out. <laughs> um, so that was actually, it would have been a challenge. And that, it was unfortunate that Sophia wasn't there because I probably could have been pushed a little bit more out of my, my, my comfort zone. So I think that what you see is that most people are kind of doing what they already knew. So you had the, uh, um, the, uh, the, the Persian singer, he sings this Drupad music beautifully, and his teacher was there. So he stayed very much into that. Beautiful. And then um, the Turkish singer also, he had written a song. Uh, this was, it was mostly in Turkish. It didn't have much Turkish influence, actually. Paloma sang a beautiful song that she wrote in Spanish. Um, so really, I think the two that were really improvising the most were Rihanna, who's a classical singer, um, she was in the red, and myself, that we really stayed with much more improvisational um, vocabulary. Um, and then as a group, which is always difficult to do when you have five people or more, it goes through a lot of messy, sort of like, what are they doing, you know? And, and so in a, sh a short amount of time, to learn how to listen and to give and take um, space uh, to listen and respond, it takes a while uh, to be able to develop that. Um, and the use of silence, which you didn't hear much of, um, which would have been nice if we had worked more with silence, I think. Um, but it was, uh, uh, I think for, um, for, for most of us, it was a really um, a fun experience. We enjoyed it. It was a good group of people. It was nice to sing with men, because my experience is that usually I'm singing with a bunch of ladies. Um, and not that there aren't male singers, but for some reason it t tends to be Singing tends to be a female thing. I don't know. It's probably when we talk about diversity. Um, so uh, that was very nice to have those two male voices. Um, we didn't have that much time to really develop anything. So that was, you know, in the future, I, I, I proposed that it was at least five days. Okay. What I noticed, I was at the first rehearsal, uh, which was in the tone zone, which has a very beautiful acoustic. Uh, it sounded immediately beautiful when you. It, it, it looked. It sounded like a vocal group, uh, and you never met. Did you also have that experience? Yeah. No. It was. It was. It was nice. Yeah. yeah the first. Uh, also in that in that synagogue, the the sounds and the yeah. acoustics are so beautiful. But it did. Um, and that was. Uh, Sophia led that. She she said, okay, this is going to be this an improvisation, um, a pointillistic improvisation. So she had like certain themes and that we would work on something uh, for a short amount of time, which is good, because for me, in improvisation, it, the, one of the, the greatest things to do is to look for an end, because things tend to go on too long. It's like idea, out idea, 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 and sometimes it's best just to keep it short. Mm -hmm. So we did, we kept those things shorter, so I thought that was quite successful, and it, had a, it was very nice. Mm -hmm. Yeah, do yeah, silence. silence is, I think, one of the most important things. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Why, could I ask a question? Sure. Why uh, do you think, uh, or what kind of things we need to change to be able to get out of your comfort zone, even though it's just two days? It, are there things that we could immediately grab and change the atmosphere that people feel safe to go out of their comfort zone immediately? Or do you have any ideas about that? Um, that's a good question. Um, I had to think about it because because I am an improviser and I've been in many situations where I just improvising, you're already out of your comfort zone because you don't know what you're going to do and you develop a very thick skin. 
because there's some I've done some amazing concerts and I've also done some really bad ones but because I had that experience I uh, it's easier for me I think for some of the other ones for them they were more out of their comfort zone than than than, than I was um, so I was kind of interested to see like what is out of my comfort zone um, and I haven't uh, maybe singing really um, composed music and singing it perfectly <laughs> or r very complicated rhythmic things would be out of my comfort zone. <laughs> uh, but improvising for me is very easy. And for the others? You, yeah, of course you had to change your role during the process, which is maybe very difficult, but if you imagine the others, uh, the other uh, singers? Well, I think, uh, um, I mean, everybody had a different background, so that you had Rihanna, who's, I think, a classical singer, mm -hmm. and um, a very skilled classical singer, and you could hear that she was really trying to explore her voice. Mm -hmm. um, when she first started working, she, she was very frontal, and she did a lot of things with her hands, so my suggestion to her was to sing with her back to the audience, mm -hmm. and that to stand on two feet and not use her hands. So. She, and then to, to limit her vocabulary. And so she did that. Um, I mean, then it, it developed into something else, but she started with that. Um, and with the other singers, uh, yeah, um, because they came in with material. Um, Rihanna didn't come in with a song that she was singing. I didn't come in with a song. I came in with text. Um, but the other, uh, the, two, the two males and, the, and Paloma had a song. So I think that for them, um, uh, they, I think if, they, if we had had more time, we could have gotten them out of their comfort zone a bit. To, um, a bit and better. how far do you think they had the possibility to, f to move towards freedom? That's actually, I mean, mm -hmm. that's the title of the, of, the, mm -hmm. of the project or process build project. Mm -hmm. do you, um, of course, if you come in with a song prepared or a prepared text, you can put another layer in it. But which layer could be possible then, or which layer was extra within this process? Um, I don't think that we had the time. I don't think that, that we had the okay. time for them to really do that, to really de deconstruct what they had um, with, with their song. Like, for instance, what happens if they, if they took that song and changed the tempo? Yes. Or, um, uh, or also if other people came in and somehow uh, uh, came as, as a... Uh, as events in the song, so that it, it gave them more information to work from. Um, I think that that would have been an, also an interesting uh, exercise to, to develop, where, where people were, were putting in ideas into their songs. Yeah. Uh, but as it was, as you can hear, they, they were very beautiful songs. But um, I like Paloma with her, she, it was a beautiful Spanish song, and then in the, at, in the middle she, she did a little improvisation, and I wish that she just stayed with that. Leave the song and just yeah. work with that. So freedom, freedom to move is a lot of about improvisation. Mm. Yeah, in this case, yes. Okay. You also talk about it on a political level because I know mm. at festival we invited a lot of artists and we, it was very hard to get visas for a lot of them. It's it's a lot of us struggle if you're trying to actually like freedom to move, which is connected mm. to a privilege. Yeah. It's connected if you're working outside of Europe. It's actually very hard, and a lot of people cannot, don't have that freedom to move. So yeah. it's not only the freedom to move in an artistic space, but actually as a political right or not, no yeah. right to that play into the project at all. That's a really interesting point, and the name freedom to move. I mean, a lot of people don't have that freedom. We did not discuss that all, at all. The most of the singers are live, were yeah. living in the Netherlands. Yeah. I, I think one of the singers, uh, uh, two perhaps, didn't have a are here as a... Yeah. Still looking for the permit, yeah. um, so in that way, for them, it's, it's also uh, the freedom is kind of topic. Yes, yeah. Yeah. Mm. yeah. But we didn't discuss that, which is a uh, really interesting yeah. point. Yeah. But those things, I think, could have come up if we had longer. Yeah. Yeah. How did the freedom to move concept play out narratively? You say that some people came prepared with their songs. Were those songs about this idea, or in the, t in the text or in the extra musical? I don't know how, what, I mean, I don't know, Paloma wrote her song, uh, it was about her throat, um, and uh, Ilias, uh, it, it's in Farsi, so I have absolutely no idea what he was singing about. Um, I used I to it poem. Was a love song. Oh, it was a love song, <laughs> yeah. And uh, uh, Yannick was also, it was a song that he wrote about 
um, his feeling about having to leave Turkey because of the political situation, actually. His was probably the most political, but we don't know that because we don't understand what he's singing about. Um, and I used a, a poem by Lawrence Ferlinghetti called um, Pity the Nation, which is a fabulous text. So, and that is very political. Did the piano player feel the freedom to move? Because all of those pieces were based around the singer. Uh, so the pianist um, was quite young and was really eager and was a very nice piano player. It, the way that he played the piano was not the way that I would have asked a pianist to play. I tried to say, listen, I don't want any chords. I, don't want, I want you to be more gestural, um, you know, play like Cecil Taylor. So he, he knew who Cecil Taylor was. That was a good thing. Um, but, you know, he was, he's young. And he was very eager, um, but I think for him this was all brand new, and he basically brought his tools that he knew. Time of Music does a lot of, of courses each year as part of our festival, and then I teach, teach basically at Sibelius Academy to basically different classes as as assistant professor. And uh, I mean, in one way, what we are foreseeing in series is very much the sort of negotiation of the social turn of authorship, collaboration, and these sort of modules. And uh, very often what this looks to me, for me very much, is that we usually each year do one improvisation course. Mm -hmm. And you have the composer courses, to, and everybody wants to write for Arditi, and they want to write for the Atima, and the composers put 100 applications in, and this and that, and so on, very career advised, and so on. Then we have for musician courses, then we have the improvisation, usually improvisation course which is this course which deals with different ways of learning to collaborate and so on. And it turn, very often turns out to be sometimes it with a vocalist, sometimes it's with a composer, sometimes with an improviser. And sometimes it very often turns out to be the most important course for those who participate. Basically, they, they really not will get that sort of big thing in their CV they think they will get, but suddenly after the course they really start to rethink their own way of collaborating with other ones. And in one way, this little bit looked like, looked like sort of, this reminds me of a little bit like the final concert of the improvisation course that we usually do yearly. Mm -hmm. and, and what one sort of like sees here is that in one way that everybody is still performing themselves in the sense that they really haven't really come into the negotiation of, of sharing identities and so on. And this is usually the big, I mean, this is the big collaboration. I mean, the social turn, Claire Bishop, all this politics of participation, collaboration, in three days you can't do it. It's, 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 so the, it's not a critique, it just takes a lot of time to get there, basically so that you're starting to, and, and you, either you do so that there's no authorship, which is very a lot of work, or then you do basically that you have somebody who coordinates it so that that artist is nevertheless not present, sort of with, with their own sort of work and so on. So I mean, for example, we did to the, the uh, curator's course this year, and Athens did, Onassis did it last year, and, and Ultima and Musica will be doing it. <clears throat> and these very much deals with these sort of same questions of authorship, how much you should participate and not, and so on. Another quite exciting example to put up on the table next to this was that we did last year, because of COVID, we were planning to do with Tölelab and Sandit Bagvati's extract, which is a improvisory ensemble working in these ways, with basically having Nordic folk musicians together working with extract and doing sort of like during five days come up with a concert where all these sort of traditions and backgrounds, wood, ergo, hardanga fiddle, kantele, would meet and do things and so on. Nevertheless, it would have needed pre-planning, then come COVID. So we ended up with the project Nagori Rengakai, where basically five extractive musicians sits in a studio in Bali during the summer, three sits, two sits in Helsinki, in Finland, Vitasari, three in Vitasari, and they send poems to each other during the day. And each, they record these improvisations by each other, which they then send in the afternoon, in the evening at 6 p.m. to each other, and then they improvise online for a half hour. This could have become a disaster. It turned out to work quite nicely, and you can find all the things on our websites, and so on. Why I'm taking time away from this project and talking about these projects is basically we're talking about all these same sort of questions of negotiation, what they're really, it can be it can be freedom to move and dealing with freedom or something. It can be Nagori Rengakai 
or it can be basically a course about improvisation. But on the f on the surface, we are really talking about these sort of same. How do you, in projects like these with freedom, really create the togetherness so that basically all these different identities are present but equally collaborating with each other so that they generate something different. <clears throat> and then it can have different titles. Mm -hmm. And do you think improvisation is a necessary part of that process? I mean, it's there's more a more more planned improvisation and less planned improvisation, and so on. But I mean, <clears throat> we know that the, we are talking about all the time uh, talking against the authorship, and so on, and and somebody leading, and so on, and we have this moral. Do you mean exactly with authorship? Beyond? Some, somebody is pre-planning a little bit how things okay. move out and so on, because we know nevertheless that if there's no pre-planning, mm -hmm. we never really know how things will sort of like work out. <clears throat> and then, then, then we'll see what we should like mm -hmm. think about this. Mm -hmm. Of course, we never really get rid, rid of that sort of challenge. What do you mean by pre-planning? <laughs> if you, well, pre-planning is sort of like, okay, you will sing the song after that person, and that comes that person, and so on. I mean, basically, we're talking about freedom on on one hand, and the other hand, it's it's uh, facilitating or or uh, how, what do you call it? Pre-planning. Uh, pre <laughs> <laughs> uh, so and and actually, what we want is a connection from yeah. from this connection expand again. So, from a very broad picture without boundaries, which is not possible in my opinion, but never mind. We try to, to start very small to find a connection to expand later on. And now, of course, in within this freedom to move, it had to be at a very high speed. Mm -hmm. um, so that could mean that you need to do a little bit more uh, pre-planning or facilitating or people who knows to facilitate these kind of things. But uh, what, what we re realize in our practice, as soon this movement is possible within two days, no problem. Mm -hmm. The result, the output could be different. That's, that's the process which is important. But as soon as you think about, okay, no, but we need to have an output. We, have to, we, we want to perform or we want to have uh, uh, something to show or whatever. You narrow down your freedom immediately it's 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 another layer coming in i was just wondering would this work much better if you do not you don't we do not expect we as a as a festival or a conference or a partnership do not expect an outcome that was the idea but what i said in the bit we, I, we, the idea was that was, that's a stone that there would be no real concert so yeah. Where we said in the beginning, we don't go to work on a program, but then in the end, there was a program, <laughs> yeah, yeah, um, with with audience. Uh, it was free entrance, so it's not that people paid a ticket or so. Uh, but what's clear was that it were all trained singers. Uh, that was especially because we were also thinking, perhaps we should have asked non-really trained singer. But Sophia was very clear that the trainers should be uh, trained, uh, not classical trained, or but. And you can hear it, they're all great singers. Uh, so the starting point is that they're all good. Um. I, I, th I, think, I think the contradictory thing here to discuss about freedom is if you're taking really the classical trained singer example mm. as basically what for a very ext extremely classically trained singer, possibly not doing contemporary music, means freedom. That means that I can go and perform with this orchestra that piece with the freedom of knowledge at the conductor gives me total possibility to perform it as I want, which means, in fact, that the whole structure before giving that person freedom is utmost. Uh, everything is in place and controlled, and that gives the freedom, which is totally contradic in contradiction what we are romantically talking about freedom here. So basically, in, in the sense like, in a chaotic world, you have no freedom, whereas in a very well-organized mm -hmm. world, you in fact have the possibility of freedom. I just came up with this yeah. concept <laughs> myself, <laughs> but, but you know, so not not trying to look like the conservative one, but but but, but it's more complex than than the romantic picture. Mm -hmm.
Yes, and I guess related to that is just because you give the space for freedom, it doesn't mean that everybody in that space is going to feel the potential to be able to exercise a degree of freedom. Mm -hmm. Like women, for example, might not be tucked in. Yeah, in certain circles. Does it also involve, again, the more the political side of mm -hmm. what's included and mm -hmm. the, the inclusion part? What If we want total freedom, then... Or, or do we want? What do we want to move with music? Or if we want to connect something, what what do we want to be part of? Uh, I noticed in the video that uh, the Dutch singer started to sing some uh, Iranian or uh, mm -hmm. the yeah. Farsi improvisation. He was giving clearly giving her some tools, yeah. and she actually caught that and she was doing it. So um, my question is about. Uh, this whole project, did you also, because it was founded by European Union, in a sense? So, so, supported by supported, European money. <laughs> exactly, but that's, um, so if we turn the freedom to move, to move to freedom, because what we are seeing now is that we are meeting a lot of different cultures. And I, I, I thought it was a very beautiful moment that she actually, as a classical singer, mm, yes. started to sing mm some Persian music and I think maybe that's I don't know if this was the point of the whole uh, of the whole program that this is what we want to achieve but it seemed like the exchange of uh, how I wrote it exchange of background through improvisation really happened here yeah, yeah. she also sang with Paloma too yeah. so Rianne was very um, eager and she had excellent ears so, um, so she put herself in into that the, those situations, and um, just because she wanted to. So, isn't so. that then the part of the improvisation and yeah. the yeah. the freedom to actually move, but also to take in the moving? Yeah, and that's what this was my impression as well. That that was the freedom to jump into the mm -hmm. cultural context. Yeah, um, that was in the focus. The setting, but I, I didn't expect it to be like that. But as you choose different singers with different cultural backgrounds, and then they start an exchange and they work together for a while, and then you start expecting what what exactly she did in a way. Also, you, I was I was um, curious to see how they how a combination worked and whether they would leave their own business, their own background, their own style, to jump into a new one. Um, that's a f sort of, it's a special type of freedom, it's you know, not the one you were talking about. It's um, freedom to, to jump over a cultural board or whatever, but um, that's just one type. I mean, it's interesting, it's musically totally interesting, but... Um, Could this be translated to an organization as well? giving this sense of um, diving into the... You translate it musically, or what you see, but this is also maybe the intent of the organization collaboration. Uh, you mean between the, our festivals? Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. Giving the same kind of trust, uh, diving into different world. Yeah, it's an ongoing process. Yeah. And it's something, <laughs> I mean, we carefully pre-planned it, <laughs> uh, <laughs> because that's the situation that the other borders given you if you apply for anything nowadays wherever you need to plan even if you want to take the train from A to B and then there's something happening in between as we noticed today <laughs> so I mean you pre-plan but you need uh, to have the flexibility to change your plans mm -hmm. and that's a, I think the same that we 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 experience in our cooperation with our nine uh, European festivals. We have all our own identity, uh, but we do, uh, the identity, identity is not a fixed thing. It's, it's developing. And because of the new influences of outside our network, or maybe inside a network, but with the closer cooperation, you have the idea, okay, we, have a really, we can really develop, we can change. And even though you can't put the finger on the change, which is, which is actually changing, mm -hmm. uh, you feel that something is changing. I mean, the two years ago when we started the project, we were really searching uh, 
how how to how do we communicate how we decide how do yeah. we and then you see a lot of difference between the nordic countries comparing with the okay oh, okay <laughs> <laughs> yep, within, you even within the nordic you, you, learn, you learn so much yeah. and and that it's something you, it's a completely different level but actually it's the same subject namely freedom to move yeah. to move forward to move backwards to stand still to look forward to look back to try to see in the future if it's possible. I mean, you have, to, and don't forget to look on the left and, and or the uh, right side. A lot is based on trust. As yeah. a, you know, as a musician, you also know, you know, trust is the most important thing. And also when you are on stage, you have to trust your musician. Trust and uh, connection. And connection. And uh, like I see Philip there sitting, uh, like um, <laughs> his project, it was introduced by uh, Graham. Uh, from Huddersfield, and I didn't, you know, I didn't know him. I, uh, you know Philip, yeah. okay, but I didn't know him. Sorry, uh, and you know, and then you, you you must have to trust, you know. Okay, and William says he's he's great. He should be great, <laughs> and, um, and that is I think very important in our way of working. And we learned, um, but it's and it's sometimes you know we have long meetings because we are, don't have we, we are really democratic. I would say, uh, don't there's no leadership in our uh, community. Um, but in its way, it's kind of real freedom, yeah. yeah. And everybody feels free to to bring in his or her idea, although we are all very different. Um, and now we're going to work on a second application, so uh, hopefully uh, it will open up even more to other also other festivals and uh, other communities. I was just wondering, we are now talking about freedom to move, and when you look at project, uh, when you look at the Iranian singer and then the Dutch singer, there's somebody who moves and somebody who stays. And I think it's also very important to focus on the freedom to stay within your yeah. comfort zone, the, the freedom to feel comfortable. Uh, because there is a lot of people who don't feel com feel comfort, there's a lot of people who are driven to move. And uh, yeah. they're, they're, um, and I think that's that's an important part of this. If you want cultural connection, there's always somebody who moves and somebody who is already there. It's very hard to connection, to, very hard to find connection when you're both moving, um, and that's something that happens in the when everybody's singing together and you you feel everybody grabbing onto things the other person is doing and and trying to move in the same direction, also trying to branch off, but then coming back to the group and there's this need to be comfortable. There's this need to be, yeah. To stay somewhere but as well I, I, I completely agree and I would like to add something because there is another another layer it's not only being comfortable and it's as well being uncomfortable uh, and, and searching and then coming coming into a flow mm. that's something that's very very difficult for, for an art form and maybe in the, in the society as well I haven't thought about it yet but it going into a flow and then all of a sudden realize, okay, now it goes automatically, and then all of a sudden, at the moment you realize it's going, it's, it's, you can't grasp it anymore, it's gone. Mm -hmm. That's something, I think it's very beautiful, and I saw it in this, uh, even though it was just a short and very fragmented uh, video, uh, something I, I like to, I realize that, yeah, these aspects, as you said, give and take, uh, uh, the freedom to stay and freedom to move and then move or stay yeah. <laughs> but all together <laughs> connected <laughs> yeah. that's yeah. a nice idea yeah. but it only works when you see as if sort of nuclear aspect the communication I think I think it, that was that's one main thing for me the project was apparently about so also your communication between the festivals yeah. but uh, also so if you if one stays and the other one doesn't move, they probably might not be communicating it, mm -hmm. and that's boring and that's not moving. So mm. but that's it's interesting because um, communication is everything. I mean that's what we do. It's we not lying to the person. Uh, there must be some special point about um, the, I don't know the intensity, the directness. Whatever we have, bringing the communication on, on 
on another level, mm. making it somehow a moving thing. Mm. Uh, yeah. That moves somebody and that moves itself, maybe. That's, um, yeah, it's, it, it's, it's difficult because um, that we are again in the question of uh, the discussion of planning and not planning and letting go or letting flow or something. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, without plans, maybe nobody moves in the answer. Mm -hmm. um, I think it's, yeah, it's, it's, it's really. Uh, but that's why we asked Sophia or Jody, of course, to, you know, to. When, so you, when you see say. when you see it's not it's not moving, uh -huh. you can you of course there are, okay. you can teach people how to move. You know, uh, you can, at least you can try. <laughs> and somebody like Sophia or Jody knows how to de deal with that. But I also agree with you. You know, when people don't want to you know stay in when they don't feel safe anymore, of course then then you have the, the that's the borderline. Yeah, but that's that's the thing. Safe, uh, not feeling safe can also be like uh, an impulse to move. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. So there should be freedom to move and freedom to stay. Yeah. Yeah. So this is yeah. for everybody. A freedom means different things. Yeah. When you have been coming up with your examples, I had to um, remember a piece uh, written by Matthias Schwalinger for the Estonia Orchestra a couple of years ago. And he definitely wanted to to give freedom to the musicians in the end. And he was doing a big speech for the in front of the orchestra mm -hmm. as telling them that they were, hasn't been free for for their whole professional life. Therefore. Because, yeah. because they were just like machines in an orchestra and there was a conductor telling them and the composer telling them what to do. And it was <laughs> it was really it was very interesting because the musicians they, they were just stabilized. <laughs> and they came up and, and they were shouting at him and they were saying, what? how can you tell us if you're free or not, or what is our freedom zone, or what is our, you know, what do we need to, to feel free from making music? And uh, we are the free persons. And, you know, we, they had big oh, discussions. Yeah? <laughs> and his idea yeah, is really an, um, tears on both sides. And, um, and it, uh, his idea was to make the uh, of, of the 90 people or 80 people as uh, orchestra and um, ensemble improvising without any mm -hmm. body leading or something so um, no conductor and did they do it and the yes and it was a, a <laughs> they tried here he had a very complex system Oh, um, it was a donation pitch. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I, th um, I think we're sort of at the end of the yeah. session. Okay. Okay. But I would so like to. Yeah, let, let's, yeah. let, let, let's close yeah, yeah. it. Yeah. So in the end, um, they, it, it, of course, it didn't work. Because they should have. <laughs> they should have decided in in the group where to follow yeah, so, yeah, and where to go yeah. next. Different panels and so mm -hmm. without saying something. And then in the end, they said, "Well, um, give us a conductor back." Uh. <laughs> and he said, well, you know, um, he could be the concert master. And then they said, well, that's the same thing. And in the end, in the very, very end, maybe I'm telling a secret now, but he was sitting, Matthias was sitting somewhere preparing the next, yeah. the next, and the next. And then they did the performance. <laughs> Can I? Uh Thank Sorry, you, thank yeah. you for this. <laughs> it's a nice story also to close yeah, off the cyclical the part of freedom. 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 I mean. What do we want for you? Uh, <laughs> um, maybe I can ask the people who are at the table to write down one comment or one feeling just on the, to put on the table as a closing note. And um, invite you to walk around the table and also look, have a look at what's been written during the the conversation and uh, thank you for uh, <laughs> this conversation and nice insights so and enjoy the rest of the afternoon i think the, the conversation hasn't been finished <laughs>